Welcome back to The Breakdown. Uh, in this breakdown, I'm breaking down episode three of the Striped Bass Hunt Show, Learning the Estuary. Uh, this is a particularly interesting episode because in this episode, I'm gonna be able to really go over what I was trying to do and then why I, I was trying to do it. Because this was literally me from scratch, having no prior knowledge of fishing in an estuary, learning how to fish it. So let's get right into it. I had a, multiple goals going into the season, and one of them was to learn how to fish in the estuary. Uh, I there really, I was trying to read it with the wind direction, and I kind of figured out that the wind doesn't play as big a role as I thought in uh, the estuaries in general. That, that. Okay, so this is number one where I'm just gonna pause and talk a little bit about this. Um, I said in this episode, I don't focus on the, the wind and the, the current off the rocks, or the I guess the tide and the current is what I think I said, when in reality I do, um, and it's very important to look at what tide you're fishing and uh, where the current is if you have current off the rocks. Um, but what I was really trying to portray in that, inner, in that interview was uh, how important it is to, or how important it is for the structure, because the, the thing about fishing off the rocks is you can have a spot and it can produce at every single one of the tides as long as it has what it needs to hold fish and then you know it can literally produce at every single tide in the estuary it's not really like that you need to have i mean literally there are spots that produce at different stages in the tides in different current directions so that was something that i really had to focus in on in this episode and when i first started fishing it having zero prior knowledge of fishing in estuaries. It was such a windy spring, as I was saying, and I just was like, okay, I'm gonna go where the wind's blowing onshore, and that's where I'm gonna fish. Which, you know, actually worked fairly well, but I don't know if that how much that was just me being lucky and there were just fish cruising the banks where the wind was blowing against, or uh, it was actually um, the wind making the fish be in that exact concentrated area. Do those goss were 40. What? One or two of these goss. Yeah. It's gotta be getting close to 40. High right, 30 we'll nation fish. And they're very aggressive. So one by far one of the best ways to catch the bigger fish during the day out of the estuaries are with small spook style plugs. Um, I, I was really liking the Revel jumping minnow. I also was using the Pumba walker. Um, and the, the Puma plug walker and what happens is like, I don't know what the deal is, but in, in general, those tend to be pulling some of the bigger fish and it's also top water fishing, which is so much more fun to do than fishing in subsurface. Now there are other times where the bass are being less aggressive and I'll go into why I was throwing certain lures then, but for this, in this scenario, the fish were feeding aggressively and I was able to catch the bigger fish in the entirety of this episode. Almost all of the bigger fish were, came on topwater plugs because that's where you're getting those more aggressive strikes. This is hilarious. He just so went around the sod bank right here because there's a little point of sod and I caught it here and the current was going that way and it just went with the current around the sod. So I had to go out there and get it around the side bank. What are you doing?
All right, so I'll continue along in this a little bit here. Um, yeah, this is a really interesting spot. So I would definitely want to talk water about this. Water is still very cold off the rocks and I felt more confident with the warmer water in the estuaries. But again, me not having the experience uh, that I do now, I wasn't able to pull the bigger fish when they were in there. So we had a really weird spring and this is still spring. Um, and the spring before, uh, which would have been last season, um, this moon phase, we landed two bass that were over 48 inches. So, uh, but the water was significantly warmer off the rocks. So that was like, we're just trying to put this all into perspective here. That was my thought for, okay, we need to get into the estuaries where the water's warmer. Um, I also had a spot that I believed held bigger fish. And the reason for that is you have this giant estuary, it all, you know, there's one main channel where the estuary comes in and out of. So that means every fish that comes into the estuary and every fish that goes out of the estuary goes through that one channel. And um, so I was like, okay, yeah, that's where I wanna be fishing. The other thing that was interesting is it's a very muddy estuary. So I was looking for structure in that estuary that might hold fish and bait fish and whatever. And it that was small rocks uh, with like barnacles and some mussels. And so, uh, I tried to put all of that together and I found a spot that had all of that and I gave it a shot in this I don't know. I think it was probably the full moon and um, the full moon in May and that was early like so again this is pretty early still, but uh nothing, you know, <laughs> I didn't get anything and uh, it was it was just tough because I knew that there should have been some bigger fish around there, but uh, my lack of knowledge of that estuary didn't help me in that scenario. Crazy sunrise. Look at that. So I was eeling it, because like that's the only way I'll catch giant fish. <laughs> I'm just checking. See if I can. Yeah. So then I'm just Still talking about the struggling, and then we got this part, which, um, so, Ryan I mean, Ryan's now, just... And, uh, I'm the, I basically started Surf Casting Seven Stripes. Shout out to Surf Casting Seven Stripes. Um, essentially, the, the initial effort was to uh, kind of just reach out to a whole bunch of people who were catching big fish and kind of get this concept of conservation across to people. So estuary fishing is my favorite. Um, yeah. And I, I was just telling Finn, basically there's just, there's a lot of skinny water, um, opposed to when you're fishing on the rocks like this, you have all this open water. Um, the fish really only have one, one area, one channel to really work. And if you know the ins and outs of that channel, you know where the deep parts are, muscle beds, structure, um, I, I mean, that's where the fish are going to be hanging. <laughs> So that right there is really important. That's really just him talking about the basics of what you want to be looking for, for structure. And, um, and in an estuary, he described all those places that will either hold bait or they hold, they break current so that the fish are going to be sitting there in weight of bait. Um, and then this day was hilarious. Use all the top water, boom, top, a bunch of top water, 20 inches and stuff. So. That was fun, but again, so ridiculously windy. Again, I've, I've caught some of my biggest Look, fish. Yeah, um, and, and those are all like, okay, like that's a nice bass. Like th those are all like high 30 inch bass and um, it's way better than I've ever done out of an estuary. Uh, but um, you can see what he's fishing is, you know, you can see the gravelly areas in the, in the background there and that's where he's gonna, he staged up and that's where he was fishing and that's where the bass were. Usually I'm fishing at low tide because I want to see essentially And this is another really cool part to it. Oh my god, smallest bath ever. This is hilarious. In the back. Okay, so I kid you not, why I first hooked that fish, there's a ton of adult bunker in that estuary. So when I first hooked that fish, I thought it was an adult bunker. And I was like, like I was so so shocked. I was like how is that even possible? Um, and then it turns out that it was 
a tiny striped bass. So now I had this, a lot of conversations about are there breeding fish in that estuary? And, you know, we came to the consensus that if it's not in this estuary or in this river, it's going to be in it's one of the ones within a short area, you know, around that spot. And the other thing that you can see I'm fishing with right there is a little glide bait. Uh, and I've always found that when the bass are being super finicky and they're not eating, you get a little really flashy little glide bait and you rip it really fast and then pause it. And that thing's going to be snaking all over the place and flashing and then it pauses and it just looks so realistic, the bass, every single time. And again, we're fishing for schoolies. This is, you know, early May. Uh, it It's like... This is what I was happy with at that point in the season and uh, it's hard to kind of go back there this time of year when it's just monster fishing right now, um, but this is what it is. Um, and I think it's so much fun to catch a tiny bass like that. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan in the background. Chill, chill, chill. Oh my gosh, it's so small. These bass that we're so catching are yeah. mostly very small schoolies, and we we're talking a lot about how yeah, so here it's goes. good to see that oh, small. Favorite part of the whole hey, show, was, right? That was, this hook that set. was completely worth coming out just for that fish right there. <laughs> and another tiny one. I mean, we, we kind of leaned into it. I was throwing a little paddle tail that was that big. Look at that hook set. Uh, hey, I'll take it. On a day when it's slow like that. Yeah, and then even, you know, even so, you can get onto some bigger ones too. Here we go, here's the glide bait again. Yeah, there you go. These are barbless, so right off. So I hope that bunker in there super early. Being able to take all of those factors and now play them into next spring is such a powerful thing. And I'm so excited to see what I can do next spring. I guess I'll just let this play out. Yeah. So if there's one thing that I was able to take away from this season in, in entirety, it was that being a one-dimensional fisherman is not fun. Uh, you got to learn how to how to really put all the pieces together, whether that be fishing in the estuary, whether that be fishing off the rocks, sandy beaches. There's so much to this sport that you need to, that I have to learn, and um, I, I I can spend. This is the second time I've spent in certain areas. I've spent multiple seasons learning that one area and every single time I keep fishing in that one area I learn so much more every year um, and now you have hundreds of miles of coastline uh, of different structure from rocks sand you know estuaries you know all of this stuff um, that hold lar large monster fish and uh, the things that I, I really got to learn from fishing in the estuary was one has a huge population of healthy fish uh, that, that it, that's very well concentrated. So now what you gotta kinda think about is, okay, how can I figure out where I can get that huge population of fish that's concentrated and then also supports life of monster bass? Um, whether that be the correct water temp, the correct food for those fish, and all of this kind of has to factor into, you know, the different runs. And I didn't fish anything that was even remotely related to the herring run. Um, where I, I should have and I knew of places that it was going off. And I had guys texting me and telling me, oh, I need to get down here. Oh, need, but, you know, it's, all, it's also tough in the spring with school and everything to keep doing to, to like, go and uh, fish all these different areas during the actual herring blitzes and... Um, but I do have to say though, if you fish those areas correctly, which I'm gonna do a little bit more of next year, I have a few spots that I have kind of keyed and mapped out, uh, which is different um, from this entirely. I don't think I'll ever fish this estuary. Well, I'll fish it very little next season. Um, only when I wanna just get on some schoolies, uh, I'll be fishing this estuary. But I fished it hard and I fished a, in many different areas and I can say that there's not a lot of huge fish in there. I'm sure there are some monsters and I'm sure you can pull a good 
30 pound bass out of that every once in a while, but I just don't know. There's one spot in there that I liked better than all the other spots there. And even now I, I bring people there when they just want to get on some, on a schoolie bite and we gotten bass up to 30 inches and we're in August and we're getting bass up to 30 inches in there. The water's like in the high seventies. So, um, there are spots in there that hold bigger fish that I, I am going to try next season in the spring and see if that's going to hold those even bigger fish when the water temps are good, when the bait, the bait fish in there is what they're feeding on or the bigger fish are feeding on. And, uh, I'd be curious to see what happens, but as of now, I guess, in the current state of everything, I, I as I said in the episode towards the end, I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull up a big fish this season. And, um, yeah, from the estuaries. So I we we tried hard in in the time that the fishing in the estuaries is at its best, and now we've moved on to other areas that produce lots of fish. And hopefully, uh, hopefully, I can learn different areas. And I wanted to learn the the beaches, and I I just couldn't I couldn't take myself off the rocks after I started catching a bunch of 25, 40 pound fish. You know, in that range. Well, like I can't leave that when it's really hot like that. I just can't do it. Um, hopefully later I'll be able to figure out some other areas and I know I'm kind of rambling now, but, uh, thank you guys so much for listening to this breakdown. Um, the episodes just get much better from here. The, the fishing is just going to get better and better and better. And, uh, I'm super excited to show you guys what we have next, uh, coming up next. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching the breakdown and I'll see you next time.